So hey, what's going on? Long time no see. Been a while since I've done a video, so thought I'd get back to it. Um, not long ago, someone was asking me how to put a TBI distributor uh, in the car, or if I'd want to do that. Uh, so yeah, let's do that today. So what we have here is your basic TBI distributor. And just as a size comparison, the reason why you might want to do something like this is guys will put an HEI distributor in their car, but some people don't have room for the HEI. They say the cap is too big. So instead, they opt to buy a small cap MSD, like one of these units. And that's neat and all, but, you know, sometimes people want to spend, they don't want to spend hundreds of dollars buying another distributor when you can go to the wrecking yard or get one from eBay or whatever, get one of these units for fairly cheap. Uh, there is a difference here, but let's look at the size difference for one thing. HEI cap, these are about a 5 inch diameter. Uh, the TBI cap, this is filthy. <laughs> That's just how it is. That's about, what, maybe a 4 inch diameter, 3.5, 4 inch diameter. Uh, the difference between these two, by the way, if you get an HEI, we all know that they have a, an, an advanced mechanism. You can always lock these out, and again, that's neat, but when you don't have room, you can go with a TBI distributor. The cool thing about these is, number one, they're small cap, and so they fit more applications. And they're also just a solid shaft. Uh, there's no rotor on this one because I put it on this one here. Um, right there. But these don't have an advance mechanism at all. These are just a solid shaft distributor. And the way these work, these, these come out in, uh, you know, the mid eighties to mid nineties. Um, they're just computer controlled. They, you plug the uh, harness into your module right there, and then you have a timing computer. So you set your timing, you put this on bypass mode and you set your timing to zero, plug it back in or take the bi disconnect the bypass mode or you know what I mean? Uh, and then the computer takes care of it from there. Uh, that's pretty cool and all, but let's talk racing applications. So first thing we do in a racing application is, well, most of us take the modules out and throw them away anyway, and then you just fire off the magnetic pickup. Here's a magnetic pickup on this thing. You know, just like with your HEI, it's the same thing. It has a magnetic pickup that we plug in right there. So we'll keep things nice and simple. There's only two wires. One's positive, one's negative. Typically, on these GM ones, this green one I'll hire all wire to a negative, and this is a positive. And matter of fact, we're going to try that, and then we're going to reverse the fields just to see what happens. I already know what happens, but it'll still work, believe it or not, if you reverse these wires. But it throws the phase off, and I'm sure it sparks backwards. I don't even know. I, I don't run them backwards, so... Um, by the way, it's the same thing with this MSD. There's a magnetic pickup right there, that blue thing. And this part right here, if I can do it with one hand. This is called the reluctor. So MSD, the GM HEI, this distributor here, they all work on the same principle. They have a magnetic pickup. You get a uh, reluctor and a magnetic wheel that rides around on these points. You can actually feel them engage with the magnet. The, the magnetic portion uh, so yeah they all basically work the same so why don't we oh how do you hook this up so yeah we throw the module away you can run any ignition system you want I just happen to have this one hooked up to a 7AL2 with a ProMaster coil so yes this will take an external coil um, again most race cars do that anyway uh, this distributor factory uses an external coil anyway so we're not really changing anything uh, so put this in your race car. You just simply wire up to your ignition system. Again, green wire, I make the ground or the negative. And the other wire, whether it's white or whatever other color we're going to have on any of these, you know, white or green or whatever they are, uh, that's going to be the positive. So we're going to start with that, and uh, we're going to run this and see what happens. Oh, there is a big old slot on the back of this cap 
Uh, I'll show you what we can do with that. That's pretty easy to take care of. Uh, let me set the camera up because I can't do this one-handed. And uh, let's run this thing and see what it looks like. Hang tight. Okay, well, i got our setup now. So let's put this together and see what we got. Now, like I said, this distributor just has a solid shaft. And these come phased right out of the factory. You don't have to do a thing to them. So again, for a race car application or uh, for something that you want to have locked out timing, but you don't have room for a big old HEI with a five inch diameter cap, this is a good way to go. Now, this is cheap. Uh, again, you can spend money on an aftermarket distributor. They're hundreds of dollars. You can pick these up in a wrecking yard for almost next to nothing. I gotta turn the power on here. Otherwise, I'll get shocked every time. So let's check this out and see what the phase looks like. Put this up to number one. And I have not enough hands. Let's check that out. Can you see that okay? I'll crank the RPM up a little bit. I hope that comes through okay, but as you can see, that phase pretty much right exactly on. That's pretty cool. Right out of the box. So yeah, that's kind of how that works. So let's wire this up backwards and see what happens. Uh, let me turn this off. Okay. Actually, we don't need to take the cap off. I'll just cross these wires here. And like I said, you can, if you wire it backwards, it'll still run in your car. I wouldn't advise wiring it backwards. But if you accidentally do, it'll run. But I, I don't know how well, or if you're going to get weird misfires and stuff, I would suspect you would. Do you hear the difference? And now then you can see how far off the phase is. And it's really, it's crackling and popping and... I don't know if that's showing up very well or not. But if you look up inside this cap, there's a lot going on in there. Way to get the shot. Hang on a second. Yeah, I was, I was waiting for a spark to come out of that cap and bite me. I said it wouldn't be the first time. Uh, let's wire that back the correct way and we'll take a closer look in that cap again and see if it looks different. You can definitely hear a difference in the sound. So that should be a giveaway. I don't know if you'd hear that obviously with the engine running. So like I say, you want to make sure it's not reverse polarity. It's always good to have the correct polarity. All right, let's try this again. Now this is wired correctly. We're going to try to get a close up view. How much better it sounds.
the third year the spark plugs. I didn't see anything different on the spark plugs. Like that'll focus. Man. I'm shaking because I'm gonna get shot. So so I can get this thing to focus in a sec. So anyway, yeah, there's that. So I thought some of y'all might think that was kind of cool. Um, yeah, I'd like I say to uh, drop that in, real simple. Just pull one of these out of any old vehicle from a mid 80s to mid 90s. And uh, you'll see the cap looks like this with this module sticking out. Looks like that. It sits on your distributor. So throw the module away, and then you'll have this big slot. You can actually run it with that big slot. It's just fine, but some people get all nervous. and get water in it. Well, it's in the race car. I wouldn't worry about it. But this right here, I just cut a little rectangle out of a uh, coffee can. And I used a hole punch for a little hole. And so you can just slide that up in there like that. And just silicone it in place. And then when you put it on, voila, it's got the whole hole covered up, except your wires coming out for your magnetic pickup. So that would work. And this is a really nasty, dirty unit. But uh, yeah, same thing. Uh, this has the, uh, I think I talked about this in another video. Matter of fact, I know I talked about it in another video. You have the little dimple on the, on the gear. There's a roll pin, and the rotor is actually in line right there, too. Uh, but again, that's if you're picky like me and you want your distributor to sit just right, and that's where your time is set, you're good to go. If for some reason your distributor's off just a little bit, but that's where your timing is, you can pop the gear off, turn it 180, put it back on, and I'll bet you'll be able to get your distributor to sit just right. Again, that's not a big deal. I'm just anal that way. This stuff has to look good. Uh, so yeah, just a quick little video. Just wanted to show you that. Someone asked about it, and I thought that'd be just cool to show you. Again, it's a lot cheaper than one of these expensive MSD distributors. Another problem with MSD distributors, by the way, is these pickups and these reluctors. I don't know why, but they like to rust. They like to corrode. They get nasty. And I know I'm already gonna have people tell me you gotta drill holes in the cap because it's moisture and condensation and all that. Um, I live in the desert. So, yeah, no, that's not the problem. And this happens to lots of people. I don't know what MSD uses, but it's pretty nasty stuff. GM modules don't do that, or magnetic pickups don't do that. So, and this thing here is, well, 30 or 40 years old. And it's nasty and green. <laughs> don't ask me about that. But whatever, I don't even know where that's from. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, if I think of something else I can add to this, then I will. But that's that's really all I wanted to show you. So I just want to get back to making videos. And I've got a few ideas, some things coming up I'm going to be doing. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See ya.